Hello everybody and welcome to episode 32 of my Human Mage playthrough. Today we are going to have a nice relaxing day in South Shore. We arrived at Hillsbrad Foothills at the end of last episode and we made it to the town of South Shore and then we just logged out in the inn right here but now we are going to go ahead and pick up some quests and I'm going to go ahead and start with the two quests inside the inn. So the first is a cooking quest to get some pieces of turtle meat and then we can learn how to cook the turtle meat. However, we have not learned cooking at all. There is a warlock sitting in the back corner there. Let's go ahead and talk to this lieutenant here and we can work on a quest to fight some warlocks that are down on the western strand. This man here was transferred from the Stormwind City Guard to South Shore, a town that should be abandoned by the looks of it, smell of the harbor day and night. So it seems like this individual here does not want to be here and is kind of wanting us to do his work for him. So we'll go ahead and pick up that quest. And we have these two quests now, so let's go ahead and step out here into the town of South Shore. And we have a ton of different quests here. Some are pretty high level, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave those for now and we'll work on these quests. Let's see what this quest is because I don't recall it. Oh, it looks like it's to fight mountain lions and hulking mountain lions. So I'll just go ahead and pick that up. We'll do that at another time. The mountain lions come into South Shore and probably kill these cows here. But for now, let's go ahead and fight some turtles. We have these gray bears here that are level 22. These are important mobs for the undead and other horde members that are fighting through this zone. But here we have these snap jaws, which are also important for the horde because they have a comparable quest to the soothing turtle bisque quest to get that recipe but for us this is like the start of our adventure here in Hillsbride Foothill. So a really fun aspect about our playthrough here through World of Warcraft as a human is that it is kind of reminiscent of the adventures of Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2 that you would partake on. Where in Warcraft 1, Medivh, who was corrupted by the Titan Sargeras, opened the Dark Portal with aid from Gul'dan on the other side of the Dark Portal and Draenor. And the orcs came through that portal and attacked Stormwind and attacked the lands around Stormwind and basically conquered it. And we see at the end of Warcraft 1 that the Kingdom of Stormwind fell and the keen keen lane was assassinated by a half orc half draenei known as Garona. and in short stormwind was completely annihilated and the remaining citizens and soldiers that had not yet died they all went aboard ships and they traveled north away from stormwind towards lordaeron and they landed here in south shore and they set up camp here in the foothills and they also went further in towards capital city and side Lordron to meet with King Terranus as well as the other human kings that are kings of the nations surrounding this area here. So we see loosely in our adventures in this Let's Play series, we were in the Kingdom of Stormwind and we were fighting orcs. Of course the orcs did not beat us, we beat them back and we helped defend the refounded Kingdom of Stormwind. But now we have made our way north out of the Stormwind towards Lordaeron and we are now here on the shores of Hillsbrad Foothills on the shores of Lordaeron and we are now going to begin questing in this area and we won't be fighting too many orcs in this part of the world because there aren't really any orcs here unless we come across members of the Horde. But we can see around Hillsbrad Foothills that there are many important locations from the second game Warcraft 2 such as South Shore, which is where the humans landed, and then is also next to where the orcs landed when they came here following after the humans of Stormwind because they wanted to conquer the entire planet so that they could have it for themselves because of their own planet Draenor was dying. We will see other places as well from Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 around this area, and we will see many, many more places as we continue exploring Lord Ron as well. I think that's one aspect of World of Warcraft that I like so much, at least in classic World of Warcraft, is that there's like so much like precedence with Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, and Warcraft 3, and we're kind of exploring the world that those games built up, but we're exploring it in a very open way, where those games are very confined and like very structured, and like the areas of the world you're in, where now we can explore all around it, and we can see all these different areas where we had different missions at originally, we now see them all together connected and we can walk from one place to another and see everything. And then the vibes are also very similar between the first three Warcraft games and World of Warcraft up until like Cataclysm where World of Warcraft feels like a continuation of the Warcraft games. We're like starting in like Cataclysm really we kind of see World of Warcraft no longer being a continuation of Warcraft 3 and the first two games. We see it more being an evolution of like World of Warcraft as a whole and like a story that they're trying to tell in the game. Uh, I might have to run here a little bit. I might Frost Nova, see if I can do that. That did not work out well for me. 
might just run a little bit more this way and then I might just have to make a full on run for it here. Snapjaw is kind of catching up and looks like we're alive. That's a little scary there. And speaking of scary, it looks like the group of undead here are wandering back in here. Let's go ahead and run this way. We will need to fight that group at some point for a quest, but that is later on. But with the release of the original versions of World of Warcraft, it was about four years after the story of Warcraft 3, so we're really picking up from where like Warcraft 3 left off with like a little bit of time in between to like let some stuff happen and let some like cities build up and other things. But for the most part, Vanilla Road Warcraft is kind of like the next step in like the story from Warcraft 3. And then we see with the first two expansions, the Burning Crusade and the Wrath of Lich King, it's really ending a bunch of stories from Warcraft 3 that were set up in the last expansion or the only expansion for Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne, with storylines of like Illidan and storylines of Arthas that we are going to explore as we go through the next two expansions of this game. And then it's really after the end of Wrath of Lich King where we see kind of like a big shift in like World of Warcraft's story where it's no longer like picking up from the stories of like the original Warcraft games. Of course like a lot of stuff was like continued story beats from like previous games like with Cataclysm, you know, Deathwing was like a character that was introduced in the previous Warcrafts. And his story is like the main focus of the third expansion but it's very different in tone and different in like kind of like what the story itself is starting in Cataclysm where a lot of people feel like Wrath of Lich King is kind of the end of like the Warcraft story and like Cataclysm is the start of like the World of Warcraft like story of like modern day World of Warcraft and like people have like different preferences and stuff like I definitely have like my preference for like a story but I don't like necessarily hate like the other end of the story of like Cataclysm and beyond like it's okay and I'm like kind of interested in exploring it but that's kind of like a question of what I want to do when like I get to that point because I feel really committed to like fully exploring the story of like World of Warcraft up until like the end of the Wrath of Lich King to like multiple let's plays that's like something that's been like a big part of like this let's play series from the beginning is that I want to do like multiple let's play series and kind of explore everything that the game has to offer through vanilla and the first two expansions and then beyond that we'll kind of figure out what we want to do and I've been trying to like figure out exactly what I want to do and I think that's going to be a decision that I make another day where basically what I have been thinking is that I have like the set number of playthroughs or like a round amount of number of playthroughs that I want to do to cover the entire story of Vanilla World of Warcraft, the Burning Crusade, and the Wrath of Lich King. And then once we get through all of those, I feel like I have really completed what I wanted to do for World of Warcraft from exploring the entire story as well as like documenting like my adventures so that I can come back to it. You know years from now maybe even when world of warcraft is like shut down and i can like re-experience like you know my childhood again basically as well as like a game that like i very much enjoy playing even if there's like parts of it that i very much do not enjoy but after wrath lich king i've been going back and forth on whether or not i want to continue where basically like my general train of thought right now is like two playthroughs of the cataclysm expansion one really exploring the horde side of things and then one really exploring the alliance side of things because anyone who knows the cataclysm expansion there's a lot of stuff that changed that happened in that expansion where we normally see with like expansions there's like a whole new region of the road like you know five to seven zones or whatever and there's like you know a bunch of quests and explorations and achievements and stuff in each of those zones but the cataclysm not only did we see that happen with five new zones but we saw the entirety of the eastern kingdoms and Cal or basically reset with brand new quests and storylines and like stuff like that which is like something that is very controversial so if we were to explore cataclysm i probably wouldn't do it as in depth as i'm wanting to do like classic world of warcraft because i don't really care about a lot of the stories in cataclysm but like some of them i would like to like document so i could enjoy it again in the future and then the general idea I had beyond Cataclysm was looking at each expansion of Retail World of Warcraft until I got tired of it basically. Where I would be looking at like Mist of Pandaria and I would look at it from like one point of view and I wouldn't look at it from like the other point of view so I'd make like an alliance character for example. And then I would look at Warlords of Draenor as like a horde character and we wouldn't get like the full story of it but we'd be able to explore pretty much all of it. Which like I think starting in Mist of Pandaria really when we're looking at like the full story of like the game as a whole you don't really have to play through like multiple sides in order to get the full story as you do in like previous versions of the game. 
of course there's a lot that changes and there are definitely unique stories that happen but like overall it's pretty much the same thing we're really starting in the burning crusade we like start seeing like a very linear story instead of a very wide and broad story in vanilla world of warcraft where vanilla world of warcraft is basically like 1000 stories you know put together into like the same world and you're kind of exploring all that where we see in like future expansions like there's still like a ton of different stories that happen but there's like three or four like main story beats and then like one very very specific like main main storyline that occurs throughout the expansion so like overall you don't have to go in depth to explore everything in future expansions. But as far as like the human mage playthrough right now is going, I'm basically only really wanting to focus on the Eastern Kingdoms and like obviously the alliance story of the Eastern Kingdoms. And I'm kind of wanting to start introducing some more like mage specific like discussion and like lore, especially since we are getting towards a region of the world that is very important to mages and like mage society. So maybe we'll be talking a little bit more about that soon. But I think so far through this series, I think I have really done everything that I wanted to do so far up until like this level of exploring the Alliance point of view of the Eastern Kingdoms. And I feel really satisfied and really accomplished with like having explored all of that. And hopefully I will be able to continue that trend moving forward as we start approaching the next 29 levels of the game, as well as the rest of the Eastern Kingdoms that we have yet to explore. I think a really interesting kind of dynamic like moving forward beyond this Let's Play series is when I do the Let's Play series because what I'm wanting to do is with like my next Let's Play series I'm really wanting to start focusing on the Burning Crusade and like that storyline as well as a whole other faction on the whole other continent where I want to explore the Horde through Kalimdor and we'll get to that at some point. But I'm wanting to do it through the Burning Crusade part of the game and currently we cannot do that. We can only play Vanilla and Wrath of the Shikin right now which is kind of annoying. So we'll see how that works out in the future. And we'll see how many filler Let's Play series I have in between them while I'm waiting to be able to play the Burning Crusade again assuming it's ever able to happen. And if it's not able to happen, well I'm gonna have to figure something out. If I do end up doing Let's Play series beyond Wrath of Shikin, I'll probably only ever do those in the retail version of World of Warcraft and I won't be waiting for Legion Classic in order to play through like the Legion storyline if I do ever end up playing through Legion. And at long last, I finally got in the 10 pieces of turtle meat that I needed for this quest. So now I'm going to go ahead and head back down the river and head over towards the South Shore once again. I guess while we are right here, let's go ahead and poke our head over here. And we can take a sneak peek at Terran Mill, and you can see there's a Terran Mill Death Guard right there. And I'm not going to go any further, so let's go ahead and beeline back towards South Shore. But we can see South Shore right here, Terran Mill right here, some two very close towns and both towns that used to be part of the kingdom of Lordaeron but now Lordaeron has really fallen and Terran Mill is in control of the Horde and is in control of the Forsaken of the Undercity which we will be talking more about in the future and then South Shore is in control of the kingdom of Stormwind who of course are with Lee Alliance. As we are approaching South Shore, we have this goblin trader here that walks between South Shore and Terran Mill and offers his goods to both factions. Let's go ahead and have a chat with him. And he is selling an orb of power that we don't really need. And he's selling this recipe for a red woolen bag that we already know. And he's selling a leatherworking engineering and enchantment recipes. And we don't need to know any of those. So let's go ahead and just turn in our quest here. I just remember before we turn on the quest, we have to pick up some soothing spices because that is part of the recipe. So let's go ahead and run into here and then I think we can buy some from Sarah Raycroft here. Thank or maybe you. it is the individual below here. Let's go ahead and talk to Mike Gantz and yes, it looks like we can buy soothing spices. And now we can turn in this quest. So here is our soothing turtle biscuit quest. Let's go ahead and turn this in. And we have completed that quest and we are so very close to level 32 now. So let's go ahead and run back out here and then begin working on our down the coast quest line that we have here. So we're going to come over here and we're going to start fighting some murlocs. We have the south shore guard that just helped us out there and finished off that murloc. But we can still go ahead and loot that even though the guard helped. A lot of the times if the guard starts fighting a mob and like kills it before you're able to deal enough damage to it, you actually lose any credit for that mob and you can't get the loot or the quest objective for that mob. 
I feel like I have been playing a decent amount of classic World of Warcraft recently, where I've had this Let's Play series where I've been playing the Human Mage, but also have like several other characters that I've been playing, and I've been like working towards completing a bunch of different classes and like each of their specializations because I want to play through like all these different builds and like all these different experiences that you can have in this game. And I actually have a spreadsheet that I'll go ahead and just share on screen right now. And I just leveled up to level 32 while fighting that Murloc, that's good. As I was saying, where basically I have a list of all the different talent trees that you can have for each class in the game, and I'm wanting to play through each of them. And I've kind of already completed some of them, but I'm wanting to do like a little bit more with them, so I'll probably share an update about this at some point, and we'll see that there's like a lot of stuff that is checked off that is not checked off right now, but that's because I'm like so very close to like finishing a bunch of these different things. And I think kind of like what I'm wanting to do with each one is like different from each one to each one. Where like some of them, like I just want to level up like all the way to like level 80 or whatever for Marksman Hunter, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm currently like level 77. Whereas with like Balanced Druid, I'm really kind of only wanting to get to like level 41-ish, 42-ish. I think I'm just going to continue playing that character until this character gets to level 40 because I have my Balanced Druid on the same server as this Human Mage. And then I think once I reach level 40 on this Mage, I'll just liquidate basically everything I have on the Balanced Druid and I feel like I basically accomplished everything I wanted. And then I'll probably just like never play it again because I've been wanting to play as a Balanced Druid, but I'm wondering if I like really want to get to level 60 as a Balanced Druid in Vanilla World of Warcraft. I've been enjoying it a decent amount but I don't particularly know if I want to do like the last 20 levels I really kind of just want to play around with like the moonkin for like a couple levels and then probably call it good I know especially when I get to like level 50 it's definitely going to be really painful because balance Druid has to drink a lot of water and I think that's going to be super super expensive as I start getting into like higher level ranges where like I don't think I'll enjoy it at all where I'm enjoying it now but I want to stop at the point where I'm no longer going to enjoy it but I'll definitely push it a little bit until I get to the point where I feel like I don't want to play it anymore so like I've just said I've been playing a marksman hunter and I'm almost level 80 and almost done with like that category and I've been playing a balanced druid and I also feel like I'm almost done with that category and I've been playing a hardcore character which I don't really have any categories for that here but I've been playing a retribution paladin and I'm really wanting to play that through Wrathless King so I might like end up doing both. And then I've been playing this human mage as well and then I have a bunch of other characters on my account that I want to play through and kind of complete. And then over time, I will get this spreadsheet that I have made. I'll get it all filled up all the way to green. And then I'll feel like I really like completed basically like a part of the game that I'm really wanting to do. Where like, I think once the spreadsheet is complete and then once I'm done making the Let's Play series that I want to do, I feel like I've kind of completed World of Warcraft. And like, there won't be really anything that I want to particularly do in the game other than maybe just like playing the game a little bit here and there. But maybe I won't even do that at some point once I feel satisfied with having completed the game, quote unquote, completed. I think playing through all the different like talents, different classes is kind of nice for me because I played through them all in the past. But I think now I'm like a little bit different where like I enjoy like different things. So it's kind of nice to revisit all of them. Where I think now it's kind of nice to like nail down a list of like what I particularly enjoy playing. Or I didn't used to enjoy mage all that much, but now I enjoy like mage a ton. And similarly, I used to enjoy hunter quite a bit. And like nowadays, I don't really enjoy playing hunter that much anymore. Like, I still enjoy it, like, a decent amount, but it's just, like, not my favorite thing to play through. And, like, same thing with Death Knight as well, and there's a Tidehunter here. Where back in the day, I played a ton of Death Knight. It's the only class that I really played. And now, I'm just not a big fan of it, the class. And, like, part of me wishes that, like, I had played as, like, a mage through, like, the re-release of, like, all the different expansions through Classic World of Warcraft. Because I think I probably would have played it quite a bit more if I had played like a mage through it instead of a warlock with the expectation that I would be playing a death knight come Wrath of the Lich King. But I think part of that is kind of sad for me because I used to enjoy death knight so much back in the day and now I just don't particularly enjoy it too much. I think that's kind of how I feel about the Wrath of the Lich King expansion as a whole where I enjoyed it a ton back in the day but now it kind of just feels a little shallow and like I enjoy it but like not as much as like I thought I would whereas I enjoy like classic era World of Warcraft like a lot more and I'm still kind of like trying to nail down like particularly like what I like basically kind of continue on from like the discussion we had in what, episode 26 of the Let's Play series or something where we were playing through the excavation site whatever episode the excavation site episode was. 
where I'm honestly leaning towards classic era World of Warcraft right now, where I think I enjoy it more than Wrath of Lich King, which is like really weird, but we'll see how I feel as I play through more of a Wrath of Lich King for the next like, year or two as it continues getting updates and I continue doing more and more stuff in it. I think part of the Wrath of Lich King right now for me too is FOMO, where I feel like it might end up going away, where like Classic Era is like pretty much here to stay now, and I'm like currently really wanting to play through Classic Era more than like the Wrath of Lich King expansion, but I feel like I should be playing the Wrath of Lich King expansion because it might be going away soon, and then I kind of just hate that, because it makes me enjoy the Wrath of Lich King a little bit less, I think. And this is the last Murloc that I need for this quest, assuming I don't die here. And looks like we are fine. We are one hit right now though, so let's quickly get into South Shore where it is safe and we can turn in this quest and pick up the next quest in this chain. So we have the lieutenant here. Let's go ahead and turn in this quest. And now he wants us to go get Murloc heads. So we just fought a bunch of Murlocs, so now we're going to go head back out there and we're going to fight some more Murlocs. So let's go do that. I just noticed that I have two talent points <laughs> to spend. I've not spent any talent points in the last two levels. Though I did just level up, so in the last level I did not spend it at all. But now we can go ahead and go through here and spend some talents. So I think I'm going to go ahead and continue with our Shatter Frostbite stuff. So I'll go ahead and just put both points into Shatter right here. So increases or critical strike chance of all your spells against frozen targets by 40%. So any targets that are frozen, we have a really good chance to hit them with a critical hit. Which overall is going to allow us to do a ton more damage to the enemies that we are fighting. I think out of all the different classes that I've been playing and that I'm wanting to play, I think Balance Shoot is probably going to be the one that I focus on most right now because one part of the reason why I've been playing that Balance Shoot is because it's kind of like helping this character out a little bit where I don't have to do like so much farming in order to get like my mounts. Where I think, as I mentioned earlier, about when I reach like level 40 on this character, I think whatever point I'm at on my Balance Shoot, I might go ahead and call it good there and I'll just send all the gold over to this character and then I'll use that gold for training and to get my mount. And I think that'll make everything like much easier and much nicer and then I'll be done with Balance Tree as a whole. And I am hoping with this Murloc I will get my last Murloc head and I did not. But I did get this enchanting formula here for giving some fishing which I think I got this previously and sold it for like 10 gold or something so maybe I'll have a good opportunity to get 10 gold again. But now with this Murloc, I am going to walk away disappointed. But with this Murloc, I am going to finish the quest. And now we can go ahead and head back into the inn, turn in this quest, and pick up the next one. Turn in these Murloc heads, get 30 silver, and now we can deliver the sack of Murloc heads to Marshall Redpath and South Shore. And I'll go ahead and sell a few things here since I'm right here next to a vendor. And then we can talk to Marshall Redpath, who is a member of the Redpath family who are not a super important family in World of Warcraft, but they do have a presence here in Lordaeron, and we can find multiple members of the family. So this is Marsha Redpath, just one of the members, and we can give him the Sack Murloc heads. And now we can go ahead and return to Farron, and we can tell him that Redpath would like us to focus on the Naga on the Eastern Strand. So we've been going along the Western Strand here, along the western half of the coast here in Hillsbrad Foothills. Now we will go to the eastern strand along the eastern half of the coast and we will start fighting some Naga. So we can come right back out of the inn here and then we can come around here this time instead of going that way and let's go find some Naga. We have a dagger spine shore hunter right here so let's go ahead and just start fighting this one and then we also have some dagger spine sirens that we can fight. We have to fight 10 of each and then we will be able to slowly work our way towards completing this quest. I'm trying to recall if we have fought Naga yet in this Let's Play series, and I don't think we have, but we might have and I might be forgiving about it. But they are just another fun RPG-y, mythical-y race that we can fight. They are overall bad guys, and basically whenever we see any Naga, we will be fighting them. Similar to Murlocs. They are both aquatic races, where the Murlocs are like fraud people, Naga are kind of like humanoid serpents in a way. And I just used a healing potion there to clutch that. I was just about to die from a lightning bolt and I just used that really quickly to save myself. And I'm going to go ahead and restore all my health and mana. And I think I'm going to die again here and I did. So let's go ahead and run back. I wasn't paying too much attention to my health and mana there, but that is okay. I might be in another little bit of a situation here, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this healing potion and hope I end up being fine. So let's go ahead and just cast a few more frostbolts at the shore hunter and then I think we are going to be okay. And we are. 
I'm 90 health. I need to be really careful about all the Nogger around here. So I'm going to come all the way over here to heal up. And then I should be fine pushing forward here. It looks like now that we made it so far down the Eastern Strand, instead of Sirens and Shore Hunters, we now have Shore Stalkers and Screamers, so they're not going to be super useful for us. But fortunately, we only need to fight one more Siren, and there are some right there, so let's go ahead and deal with them. And this Siren is dead, so I'm going to go ahead and loot her, and then I'm going to go ahead and run away from the other Siren, because I don't really want to fight it. And we can now head back to South Shore to turn in this quest, but really quickly, I want to head off over here, and I want to explore part of Hillsbrad Foothills that we have no reason to come to, because it is a questing area for the Horde, but it is Dungrok, which is an important location from Warcraft 2, so I kind of just wanted to check it out really quickly. And it is a Dwarven Fortress, and we have these Dungrok Mountaineers and Riflemen and all these dwarves out here, who are all members of the Alliance, and this is just an Alliance fortification here, where we don't really have anything going on here, because this is just an area for the Horde to quest in. Spoiler, they kill all the dwarves here. But we can come in here and we can see that it is just a giant Warren fortress. And it is actually a relatively safe spot for us to hang out in. It wouldn't be on a PvP server, but since we're on a PvE server, we could just hang out in here and we would be fine. We have some cool airplanes here as well as some tanks. And then down here we have Captain Iron Hill, who is the boss of this area and is the leader here. But now this is a safe spot for us to hearthstone back to South Shore, so let's do just that. And arriving at the end, we can go ahead and talk to the lieutenant here again. We can get this axe here. And now we have a new quest to report to Major Samuelson and Stormwind Keep. And he says, I shouldn't be a problem getting my report seen. The new captain of the guard, Major Samuelson, was my mentor while I was stationed in Stormwind. It should give him more than enough excuse to have me transferred back to the city. I need you to carry my report to him, though. We don't want Old Red Path to catch on. So we can go ahead and return to Stormwind. But we are going to go ahead and do that next episode. Because as far as this episode goes, I'm going to go ahead and call it good here. I hope you all enjoyed watching this. I very much enjoyed playing through this episode. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Azeroth. Goodbye.